Hello everyone, welcome to the video. This is the first video of a series of structural engineering design presentation, which will include uh, reinforced structural concrete, pre-stressed concrete, and structural steel. Today, as the first video, I'm going to start with some basic concepts about the reinforced structural concrete and its design criteria. The design standard I'm going to follow here is ACI 318 2014, the building code requirement for structural concrete. And the design procedure is LRFD, Load and Resistance Factor Design, also known, known as Limit State Design. What it is is the design is to provide a reduced strength that will support the factor or amplified load. Specifically, we use phi mn greater or equal to mu or phi vn greater or equal to vu. Phi here is the strength reduction factor. mn vn are nominal moment and shear strength, respectively. They can be taken as the theoretical strength according to specified dimensions and material properties. MU and VU are moment and shear due to factored load. Usually, they are retrieved from the structural analysis by load combinations. As we know, concrete is strong in compression, but weak in tension. That's why reinforcement steel bars are placed at tension area of a section. Now here comes the first definition. Net tensile strain, epsilon T. Epsilon T is the tensile strain in extreme tension steel when the concrete strain at the extreme compression fiber reaches their limits, which is 0 0.003. Now, based on the value of the exponent t, the section drops into one of the four categories. The first one, balanced strain condition. This is a condition that the tension steel reaches its yielding strength when the concrete strain in the extreme compression fiber reaches its limit. That means the steel yielding, yielding at the same time with the concrete compressed to, their, to its uh, uh, compressive limit, strain limit, 0 0.003. The second condition, compression controlled condition. In this condition, the net, tens net tensile strain, epsilon t, is less than Fy divided by Es. Here, Fy is the uh, yield strength of the steel, and Es is the modulus of elasticity of steel. What will happen in this condition is a brittle failure mode with little, more, little warning because of the concrete reaches its uh, uh, limit, crash limit, and by the compression. Example of such condition is the column subject to significant actual compression. According to ACI, a section is considered as a compression controlled when epsilon t is less than 0 0.002. Now the third condition, tension control condition. This is the condition that the net tensile strain at from T is greater than 0 0.005. The failure mode from this condition is in the form of excessive deflections and visible cracks before the structure collapse because of the reinforcement steel yielding with elongation 
so people can see that the, the deflection and visible the cracks so people have time to leave the structure safely. Example of this tension control section is most of the flexural members such as beams have to be designed as tension control. The last one is transition section. This is a section that the epsilon t is between 0.002 and 0.05, between the compression control and tension control. Now next we are going to talk about the minimum and maximum steel area. According to ACI 318, the minimum tension steel area required a equals to three times square root Fc prime times B times D divided by Fy. Here Fc, Fc prime means the concrete strength and B is the width of the section and D is the effective depth of the section. Fy is the steel uh, yielding strength. At the same time, it has to be greater than 200 times B times D divided by Fy. As to the uh, area maximum, steel area maximum, ACI 318 limits the maximum reinforcement in a flexural member to that which results in a net tensile strain not less than 0 0.004. This is the limit. Practically, it is always good to use 0 0.005 to make sure that the, uh, the flexural members are tension controlled. All right, now this is all we're going to talk about today. And as I said earlier, this is the first video of a series of uh, civil structural engineering. So feel free to leave your questions or comments at the bottom and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And also, there will be, because uh, there will be more videos coming up, uploaded, so don't forget to subscribe. And uh, hopefully, yeah, this video is helpful, and thank you for watching. See you next time.